Hello. I thought I would make a video about meteors and how I capture images and videos of them. First, some terminology. A meteoroid is a small body in the solar system that can range in size from a speck of dust up to one meter in diameter. Generally, something larger than that might be considered an asteroid. A meteor is a space rock that enters Earth's atmosphere, causing a streak of light to appear in the sky. A fireball is a very bright meteor. A bolide is a very bright meteor that ends with a terminal flash. A meteorite is a space rock that survived its passage through Earth's atmosphere and made it to the surface of Earth. A meteor shower is an event where many meteors occur in a short period of time. Meteor showers are named after the point in the sky where the meteors appear to originate from. This point is known as the radiant. Really, the path the meteors are taking are almost parallel. They appear that way due to perspective. Regular annual meteor showers occur when Earth passes through areas of debris left by comets or asteroids. There tends to be more meteors in the morning just before dawn than in the evening. This is because in the morning you are on the leading edge of Earth in its orbit, and in the evening you are on the trailing edge of Earth. Some meteors leave what is called a persistent train a glowing trail that persists for some time after the meteor, sometimes up to many minutes. Here are some time lapses of persistent trains left by meteors. Equipment. For cameras, I use a Canon 850D and a Canon Rebel T8i for images, and a Sony A7S III for video. Any camera capable of long exposures should work for images, as long as you have a way to have it take continuous exposures. For video, a camera capable of shooting very high ISO with low noise is desirable. For each, a large SD card is desirable. I use a one terabyte SD card for video. This can store almost an entire night of video. I use a shutter release cable on cameras that I am taking images with. For capturing meteors, a high-quality, fast lens is desirable. I primarily use a Sigma 24mm f1.4 art lens for images and a Sigma 35mm f1.4 art lens for video. A good, sturdy tripod is important to allow capturing of sharp images with long exposures. Camera power supplies, sometimes called dummy batteries, 
will allow you to run all night without having to change batteries. I use a dew heater controller with dew heater strips that attach to the lens to keep the lens dew free and frost free. I use an Apertura all night imaging power supply, which is a battery bank with a built in inverter to power all my equipment. This saves me from having to run long extension cords and also saves me from having to wrap them up in the morning. I can set up anywhere on my property without having to worry about how I will get power there. For convenience, I place my battery bank, dew heater controller, and camera power supplies in a chair so I can easily carry them all together. To capture meteors, first I set up my camera settings. For still images, I set the image quality to RAW and large JPEG. The RAW file is important for post-processing the image. The JPEG files are useful for reviewing frames. I enable high speed continuous on the camera, which allows the camera to take continuous exposures when I lock the button on the shutter release cable. Depending on sky conditions, I usually do six second exposures with my lenses wide open at f1.4 and an ISO of 3200. For video, I set the quality to 12 bit and set the frame rate to 60 frames per second with 1 60th second exposures at f1.4 and ISO 128,000. Next, I bring my chair out that has my battery bank, power supplies, and dew heater controller on it, and I set it up where I plan to put the cameras. Then I bring my cameras out on tripods and set them up. Then I connect the dew heater straps to the dew heater controller and power that up. I do this first because it is an easy step to forget, as everything will appear to be working until you come out in the morning to find the lenses covered with dew or frost. Then I will connect the camera to the power supplies and power those up. For framing, in general, I will aim the cameras toward a dark part of the sky taking into account where the moon might be overnight. I aim both cameras in the same direction, one shooting images and one shooting video. This allows me to identify times when meteors occur so I can find them on video. I carefully focus the cameras on stars using live view. I usually refocus a few times taking test exposures until the focus looks accurate. Then I will lock the shutter release on the camera taking images and ensure it is taking continuous exposures. Then I will start recording video on the other camera. I usually let the cameras run all night so I will set an alarm for about 45 minutes before sunrise to come out and stop exposures and bring in everything back inside. To find the meteor on video, I'll use a simple spreadsheet like this. And first I'll review the frames on my other camera where I'm doing still frames. And that allows me to identify which frames have meteors and what time the meteor occurred. 
and then I can use that along with the time that I started recording the video to calculate the timestamp where I should be able to find the meteor on the video. So I've got the video from last night open in my video editor, and I'm going to look at 303.43, and I should be able to find that meteor if I go frame by frame here. And yeah, there it is. You can see the meteor right there. So I can use that info of when that meteor is on here. And I'll usually frame back until just before the meteor starts. Go back two more seconds. I can cut that two seconds before. And then I can go forward through to the end of the meteor. And when I don't see any other detail left from that, I usually go two seconds after. And I can cut that. And now I have a segment right here that has a meteor. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful, and I hope you get out and capture some meteors soon. Best of luck and clear skies.